lecture series on financial markets and institutions. In this lecture, I will be talking about evolution of Indian financial system. When we talk of evolution of Indian financial system, what it implies is that how Indian financial system has evolved over a period of time, right from the time of the pre-independence up till the present days, over a period of time, how the financial system has developed, what were the constraints during that period of time when the system was regulated and what are the challenges when the system has been quite free, I would say, and there are various measures that have been taken place over a period of time which has developed the system, Indian financial system and today we can say that Indian financial system is one of the most found, sound financial system in the world. There are lot of regulatory measures that have been taken place over a period of time that have lot of liberalization that has taken place in the Indian financial system, lot of freedom has been given to the Indian system, Indian financial system to make this system more challenging, to make this system more competitive and to improve the productivity and efficiency of the different institutions which are involved in the which which are involved and which I can say which are the part and parcel of the in Indian financial system. If I talk of the evolution of financial system, I would divide it in three different categories. The first phase is the financial system up to the 1951 that is we call it pre-independence phase or pre-independence era. Although the country in, got independence in 1947, but up till 1951, I mean we took as a one phase and then the second phase consisting of the post-independence right from 1951 up to the 1990s and the phase three is post-1990 that when we adopted a very significant major economic liberalization policies, right. And so, the, in this way, I can say that financial system, evolution of financial system can be categorized in three different phases, that is the pre-independence or I would say before the 1951 era, the 51 to 1990s era and the third is post-1990. Let me talk very briefly about all these three. The first phase, which we call it before 1951. The structure of Indian financial system during the pre-independence era was that of traditional economy. Means the Indian economy was basically an agrarian economy and the industry was very much limited. Even the service sector were very much very very confined to a only few sectors, right. So by and large the Indian economy was agrarian economy. Most of the income, most of the people were involved in the agriculture sector or allied activities and the basically it was a rural dominated economy pre-independence. So, the industrial development could not take place during that period to a great extent, right. I would or, or put it this way, I will say industrial sector was neglected by the government at that point of time. So, this phase was characterized by slow growth of economic development reflected in low per capita income and saving. Since the level of income or the per capita income of the country at that point of time was very, very low. So, because of the low per capita income, the saving level was also very small. And because the people did not had the large disposable income, so because of that, even the industrial development could not take place because the things used to be imported, whatever the manufactured goods that was required at that point of time because of the limited purchasing capacity of the people that too was used to be imported. The financial system was not quite developed in that day, in that period of time. So, if I say the main feature were that semi-organized securities market, that is the securities market was not properly regulated or that no, was not in the organized sectors means there was like in the commodity market, in the commodity market even in Mondays. The, the traders, the intermediaries used to do the trade on behalf of the farmers, on, on behalf of the consumers. So, it was not an organized market though there was no regulator for that. There was a close circle industrial entrepreneurship means industries were confined to a few industrial houses 
only the I am not naming a few industrial houses, but only a few industrial houses started their business or started the industries during that period of time. So, the entrepreneurship was not promoted to a great extent during that period of time. When I am talking of entrepreneurship, I am talking about the large business houses or large industries at a where the production can take place at a large level. So, restricted access to foreign savings means the foreign savings were not allowed in India at that point of time or if at all I would say it was a very, very, at very small level and absence of intermediaries in the long term industrial financing means for industrial finance because you require, if you require, if any industry requires long term financing, the in intermediaries like in form of developed financial institutions that was missing during that period of time. So, what it means is that the security market was quite regulated, there was a closed industrial entrepreneurship, it was restricted to few houses only, right. So, access to the foreign saving was almost nil and the absence of intermediaries means the industrial financing, for industrial financing the financial institutions were not developed at that point of time. Then in the 1990s, before the 1990s from post independence up to the 1990s there was an era when the country got independence and after the independence although we, we focused on the industrial development but the focus was basically on the public sector and even in the financial system the all those financial institutions whether you call it banking system, the, the mutual fund industry, the insurance sector, they all were in the public sector, they were not in the private sector. So, it means what constitutes the financial system by and large when we talk of the financial system in any country we say financial system consists of the banking system. When I say banking system which consists of the, the public sector banks, the private banks, the foreign banks, the, right. So, the whole host of the banking system, then you have insurance companies, then you have the foreign exchange markets, the commodity markets and all intermediaries which are involved in it. But by and large the financial system was confined to the banking system and the in a few insurance companies. And even in the banking system, the banking system was being controlled by the public sector banks. So, in 19, post 1951 government started to control financing system by setting priorities in credit and finance, but that was through government only. During this period, there were gradual transfer of private ownership to the public ownership, means over a period of time I will be just talking about the how the private banks were being transferred, being commercialized, we were being transferred to the government ownership, right. So, so the gradual transfer of ownership has, has taken place from public, from private to public. The major development of the Indian financial system post independence, I would say that I will categorize, I will say in few things, few, few points that nationalization of SBI in 1955. SBI at that point of time was the largest banking banking system in that country and that too was being nationalized. Up till 1955, it was owned by a, some industrial houses, but during the, in 1955, the government nationalized the State Bank of India, which was the largest bank at that point of time. In 1969, 14 major commercial banks were brought under direct control of government of India. That is, those commercial banks which are operating in the country, especially the large commercial banks that were operating in India, 14 of them were being transferred or being the ownership was being transferred to the government. Means it became a public sector bank, the government bank if I say so, right. And the even LIC and GIC was another historical measure that is the insurance companies, there was no private insurance company after that, that the insurance sector which was the life insurance was being regulated by LIC and the general insurance was being regulated by, when I say regulated me, was controlled by the general insurance company, right. And that too was nationalized in this era of 1951 onwards. Apart from this nationalization of commercial banks and the insurance companies, development bank and financial institutions were being set up, that too in the government sector, in the public sector. In addition to nationalization, 
the government set up a new institutions in the public sector because at that point of time a need was risen that there should be some large financial institution for industrial development of the country right so for development of the industrial development of the country large finances were required in order to cater the needs of the finance to the industrial houses government of india start financial institutions in its or in the in the public sector so institutions were created to meet the financial needs of the industries during this period the public sector occupied a commanding position in the industrial financing system in india for example sidbi ifci idbi uti from 1950 up to 1990 whenever we used to talk about the financial institutions the first name that used to come in our mind was the idbi which was the largest financial institution for financing the industry the, the ifci should be for a small and public set small um, business houses small industrial development bank of india because the small scale sector was also coming up during that period of time the government of india was promoting the small scale sector the medium and small scale sector for manufacturing purposes for that purpose because the large financial institutions that is like idbi ifc and uti they used to finance large industrial houses so in order to cater the needs of the small businesses small scale sector and the mid size company mid size businesses and small and medium businesses the sidbi was being specially opened the sidbi small industrial development bank of india for catering the needs of the small business in india so these four were the four major financial institution for financing that is idbi ifci uti and said be for small scale business and the third aspect in the post independence was regarding investors protection there were many corporate frauds and abuses which resulted in the loss of public confidence to restore confidence investors confidence and faith the government adopted drastic measures like companies act 1956 unless people have faith in a system people will not going to invest and the corporate houses should also be regulated so that the people's money is not being misused is not being cheated and the corporates must act as per the law of the country so for regulating the corporates when i use the word regulating it doesn't means putting negative measures on them regulating means they should function as per the law for this purpose a very comprehensive companies act was being drafted and was been enacted in 1956 that is we call it companies act 1956 still today in india that companies act 1956 is the base for regulating for for running the affairs of the companies and time to time over a period of time many changes has taken place and many changes do take place but this companies act is the still the base of the rules and regulation for the companies so the companies act 1956 was being started in in 1956 then capital issue act uh, and nowadays we call it sebi now no longer we call it capital issue act but the capital issue act was also being formulated during the this period and a very famous act which we call it mrtp act monopoly restrictive trade practice act that was also started during that period of time that was also enacted during that period of time means from 1951 to this period 1990s because the idea was many large companies were adopt were start have they, they start adopting monopoly practices so which was which was exploitative of nature to the consumers which were not in the interest of the consumers in order to protect the consumers interest so that the companies especially the monopoly companies the companies which have a large market share cannot exploit the consumers by virtue of controlling the supply of a product or a service the mrtp act was being passed right this has been repeated by the competition act nowadays we this act uh, mrtp act is no longer there this has replaced with 
company the competition act. So, for in order to provide protection to the investors these basic uh, the companies act, the capital issue act and the MRTP act were being enacted. Now, comes the post 1991 this is the phase where major economic development has taken place in the country. This is a phase where financial system in the country has come of age I would say that it has it has grown in size in terms of efficiency in terms of productivity and there are lot of investors confidence that has been created during this period of time. See what is the basic purpose of any financial system in the country basically financial system the basic job of the financial system is to motivate weight people to save and channelize the savings for, for productive purposes means the people who have when I say the people people in means industry anybody individual savers households or even the industry those who have the savings that saving is being put to productive use. So, that those who needs money who needs money for investment purposes for opening of the factories for opening of the service centers right. So, those who needs the business for for business for industry for commerce for trade right they can be provided with enough resources from the people who are the savers and people will invest money people will save and invest money when they will have a confidence in the system when how the confidence is being developed confidence is developed by creating taking such steps. So, that the money for which the purpose for which they have lended the money the money is being used for the same purpose if that is there then in that case the confidence of the savers and for investment purposes will increase and the money will be used for productive purposes that will grow the wealth for the people who saves because like like I say why do people invest in mutual funds people invest in mutual funds which is an integral part of the financial markets financial system in any country that so that people know that the mutual fund house or the asset management company will use their money and will not manipulate will not cheat them and they will put to use this money is being put to use for productive purposes right and then can their money can grow over a period of time and thereby the savers can create wealth for themselves then only people will invest in the mutual funds right. So, when it will be created the confidence will be created if there will be transparency in the system. So, various measures were being taken in the post 1991 era to make to strengthen to improve the efficiency of financial system in the country. So, declaration of the new industrial policy witnessed a major transformation in the financial system means up till the 1991 Indian economy as a whole was regulated one and we realized that on an average the GDP was increasing at the rate of 3.5 percent which normally many of the economists call it Hindu rate of growth. So, this if this is was the rate of growth in the country that will not lead to eradication of poverty if we wanted to eradicate the poverty we will have to open our economy we have to liberalize our economy this was the feeling that was being real that were being felt post 1991 with this objective the economy was being liberalized. So, that instead of controlled economy a, a free economy can be when I use the word free free means that where the more autonomy more independence is being given to the entrepreneurs to the industry for improving the business for for different institutions for. So, for that purpose the the post 1991 there were many drastic changes that took place in the Indian financial system also. So, the conservative approach towards the development process in India shifted to free market economies we, we shifted from
from very conservative approach, controlled approach to the free market economies. So, the notable developments in this era of 1991 are like from public to private ownership. I was saying just now that during the 1951 to 1991, there were many banks that were being nationalized, the insurance company were being nationalized, the mutual fund was in the government sector that is the UTI was the only mutual fund that was owned by the government of India. So, there was a not the private ownership, what is the government ownership, the public ownership, right? public sector insurance was in the hands of the public sector the banking were in the hands of the public sector and the mutual fund industry was also in the hands of the public sector that is the, the government owned majority of the shares were being owned by the government. Post 1991 this policy has been shifted from public to private ownership. So, the major steps initiated during the phases were to privatize important financial institutions like IDBI which was the largest financial institution before 1991, it starts offering their equity share to private investors in all parts of privatization of the financial institutions. That is, IDBI offered its shares to the general public, so that the private ownership is also being in involved in the, in the largest financial institution of the erstwhile largest financial uh, institution of the company. So, it means IDBI started offering their equity shares to private investors for all parts of the privatization of the financial institution. The setting up of a private mutual funds and banks under the guidance of RBI also came into existence. Up till 1991, the mutual fund, as I just said, there was only one mutual fund that was in government owned, that was the UTI. After 1991, many mutual funds were being allowed, many asset management companies were allowed to start not only the Indian, but even foreign mutual fund houses were being given permission to operate in India, right. When I say to operate in India, not only nowadays they can invest in the Indian equity, but even they can invest foreign equities. Many mutual funds houses which are operating in India, which are privately owned, they can not only in invest in the Indian equity market, but even they can invest in the offshore market means they, they can al they, they are allowed to invest internationally. They can al they, they can invest in American market, in European market or in any part of the world where they feel that the prices of the equity is reasonable and they can their value can increase even that can be increased. Even the, the foreign in institutions can invest in the Indian equity market. So, setting up a private mutual fund and banks under the guidance of the RBI. Many banks were being started in the in the private uh, sector like these days very two, three very important name Access Bank, the IDB, uh, sorry, uh, the HDFC Bank, the ICC Bank, right. So, they were being, they, they, they operate in the private sector. There are a whole host of the private banks that are being allowed and that are operating and they are doing very reasonably well. They are giving good competitions and the environment is of a competition, environment is of a improving the efficiency, improving the productivity to serve the customer in the best possible manner. So, the challenge is to offer because as the competition grows, the challenge is always in the in the minds of the management of the banks is so that the best product can be offered to the consumers. So, the setting up of a private mutual funds and banks were allowed in the post-1991 era. Transformation, transformation of institutional structures. The institutional structure has undergone a major transformation. When I say structure means how the ownership system and other things, how the, how the companies operate, how the board operates, how the system operates. It became more capital market oriented. So, this is reflected in the changes in the role commercial banks, mutual funds and so on and so forth. A high level committee was appointed under the chairmanship of M. Narsimhan to, to examine all aspects of the financial system, right. A committee was being formulated under the chairmanship of M. Narsimhan to suggest to the government of India that how the financial system 
can be improved, can be strengthened in the country. And some of the suggestions of the Nursing Committee were adopted by the Government of India. So, the committee submitted its report and notable references were made. Privatization of the financial institutions, we have already spoken about it, that many financial institutions um, which I name I was talking that IDBI, IFCI, SIDB, they were all publicly owned, they were they will start privatizing the financial institutions and not only the privatizing institutions, but many institutions start operating in the private sector after the 1991. Reorganization of existing financial structure, the system which was there that were being liberalized, liberalized. Protection of investors, today I can say the CB Securities and Exchange Board of India is doing a very good job to protect the interest of the investors. Those people who invest in the equity market, the mutual funds market, right? A very size of the mutual fund market is expanding at a very fast rate. The, the market capitalization of the stock exchanges in the country is expanding at a fast rate. That is when I say market capitalization, it means the value of equity that is the number of shares issued by a company multiplied by the market price that makes the market capitalization of a company. If you take the sum total of the companies which is list which are listed in the stock exchanges, right, that makes the total market capitalization of the equity market in the country. So, in order to protect the interest of the investors, SEBI has taken innumerable at separate point of time, we will be talking of the measures that has been taken by SEBI because that itself is a very, very lengthy topic to be discussed. So, I will say investors protection is one of the very important significant steps that has been recommended by the this nursing committee. Adequacy of capital structure, when you say capital structure, most of the banks that were operating in India, their capital was very, very limited. So, the, the capital structure unless the banks are properly capitalized, they will not able to lend the money in a, in a large on a large basis. So, the adequacy of the capital structure was being fo recommended by the nursing committee. Improve efficiency, effectiveness and competitiveness, right. In order to make the financial system more vibrant, there is a need for improving the efficiency and effectiveness and competitiveness. So, these were the few recommendations of the nursing committee. So, I will I'll be continuing to talk about this the evolution of financial system in my next lecture. So, it this talk in this lecture what we have talked is that we have classified the evolution of the financial system broadly in three categories that is the pre-1951 I would say I would say pre-independence by and large we call it from 1951 up to 1991 that was a basically a regulated system where the the lot of regulations and the institutions were by and large being owned by the government. And the post 1991 where we liberalized our economy, not only we liberalized our economy, but we also liberalized our financial system. Thank you very much.